probability tree diagrams. We have two events, A and B, which are independent. Event A goes first, and then event B. A dash represents the event A not happening. Okay, so this is the first event. Either A happens or A does not happen. A dash. And then we have the second event. So either B happens or B does not happen. Mark the probabilities on the branches. So the probability that A happens is 0 0.4. So the probability A does not happen will be 1 minus this, 0 0.6. The probability B happens is 0 0.8. The probability B does not happen will be 0 0.2. We can list all of the outcomes possible for this probability tree in this column here. So following this path through the tree means event A happens and then B happens, so that's AB. And that has a probability of 0 0.4 times 0 0.8. This path is AB dash with a probability of 0 0.4 times 0 0.2. Likewise, all of the others, A dash B, 0 0.6 times 0 0.8, 0 0.6 times 0 0.8, and A dash B dash, 0 0.6 times 0 0.2. I've worked out all the probabilities here. If you add them all together, you will get 1, as expected. David takes a forklift truck driving test, which can be attempted a maximum of three times. The probability that he passes the first time is 0 0.1. On his second test, he's improved, and the probability that he passes this time is 0 0.3. And then with more practice, he improves even further, so the probability that he passes the third time is 0 0.7. He is not allowed to take the test after the third time. There's a maximum of three attempts. This probability tree is incorrect. The problem with this is, let's say if I use the letter S for success, so he's passed the test, and F for failure, that he failed, he didn't pass. If he's successful and he's passed the test, why would he be doing the test again? Okay, so you can see from this tree diagram, this shouldn't be here. Again, if you've got success and failure, if he's passed the test, he's not going to do the test again. And so that's his first attempt. Second attempt, and on his third attempt, you could have success or failure. Okay, so this is the structure of the tree diagram. The probability he passes the first time is 0 0.1, the second time is 0 0.3, and the third time is 0 0.7. So the probability that he's failed here, that 0 0.1, this would be 0 0.9, 0 0.7, and 0 0.3. Yeah, the probabilities added together for any of these V-shaped symbols on a tree diagram should always be 1. Okay, so these two add up to 1, these two add up to 1, and these two add up to 1. So what's the probability overall that he passes, that he's successful? By looking at the tree diagram, um, he's successful along this path. So you can write down this event, S, or he could fail first, and then he's successful. So you could have this. Or you can say he fails first time, fails a second time, and then he's successful. So 
So you could have this. And you can work out the probability for each of these and then just add them together. So that's one option. There's quite a lot to work out in that. An easier way would be to work out the probability that he fails every time. So work out the probability of failure, failure, failure. And then if you do 1 minus the probability of three failures, it will give you the probability of success, the probability that he's passed. Okay, so if we do 1 minus the probability that he's failed every time, so that's 0 0.9 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.3, 0 0.9 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.3, it gives us this, and then if we do 1 minus the answer, 0.811. This is the overall probability that he passes his driving test. In this example, we have two events, A and B, and we have conditional probabilities. Okay, so the probability that event A happens is 0 0.6. The probability that event B happens, given that A has happened, is equal to 0 0.2. And the probability that event B happens, given that A does not happen, is 0 0.5. So first of all, A, A dash, B, B dash, B, B dash. So we've marked the events on the tree. The probability that A happens is 0 0.6, which means this has to be 0 0.4, they add up to 1. The probability B happens, given that A has already happened, so that's the probability that goes here. B happening, given that A has already happened, is 0 0.4. 2, which means this has to be 0 0.8. The probability that B happens, given that A did not happen, that's B happening, given that A did not happen, is 0 0.5. So 1 minus that will give you 0 0.5. There you go. You have a probability tree with all the probabilities marked, and you can use this to solve more complex problems. The conditional probabilities in this uh, tree diagram are all highlighted here. These are all conditional probabilities. For example, this one here, this represents the probability that event B dash happens given that A has already happened. And that's equal to 0 0.8.